So, here I'm gluing some perforated release film, P3, down to some breather material, which in this case happens to be six ounce fiberglass. And I'm using the Super 77 spray adhesive. And having laid the breather out, I'm rolling the perforated film down the top. And this is awesome, because it lets you stick them down as one piece, and saves a lot of trouble, and it keeps the release film from getting all wrinkled and the breather from getting all stretchy and wiping it down with a cloth just so that it's uh, get some of the wrinkles out of it. You have to use enough spray adhesive to stick them together but not so much that it gets drippy. Um, and now I'm moving on to peel ply. Peel ply is kind of hard to cut unless your scissors are very sharp. Um, and I'm pre-kitting it roughly the size I'm going to need to take into account the slip joints. Um, a lot of times if you're going around tight corners, cutting the peel ply on the 45 to the direction that the fibers run on the bias will allow it to be really nice and conformable. This also applies to using woven breather like the fiberglass we were just looking at. And here I am kitting up the little pieces of peel ply and now moving quickly onto the bag, I've laid out a very large piece of vacuum bag and fortunately my table is slightly larger but not quite wide enough. So I'm putting tacky tape all the way around and sliding the bag over. Putting the tacky tape on a bag makes a huge difference in terms of how easy it is to put down. It saves you a lot of time making darts and it is just an all around good approach if you're making a bag that is, say, uh, less than 20 feet long, um, or is going over a park with any type of complex geometry. So, um, also cutting off the edge of the bag real close to the tacky tape so it doesn't get stuck underneath. This will save you some trouble too when you're putting a bag down. Uh, you don't want that flap getting stuck under. So, all set.